Dear friends, uh, dear Sangha, today is April 6th, uh, 2020. I am speaking to you from uh, Moonlit Crane Zendo on Manitoulin Island. Uh, it is a beautiful uh, spring day here, sunny skies. Five or six degrees, but the sun is warm. Uh, I'm always struggling with these two impulses. That one of them is, especially at a time like this, where people, are, uh, everybody is uh, staying in their homes. I feel like I should just go to the zendo and. Uh, withdraw myself to the silence of the Zendo and leave the world of complications outside. Uh, human beings uh, and human relationships, uh, to me at least personally, it seems so complicated. And then there's a second impulse is to try to make some kind of offering to go out into the world uh, to try to reach people, uh, to make a, an attempt at communication, uh, to try to offer something, anything, uh, anything that I can to you. Uh, so this is a bit of a, a, negotiation, I guess. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I'm, I decided I'm going to try to keep, uh, make another uh, Dharma talk, a short Dharma talk uh, for this week. Um, I'll keep try to do them as much as I can, especially during uh, this uh, current uh, uh, situation. Uh, so maybe we can stay in touch this way. Uh, in, in the Buddha Dharma, uh, there are three kinds of offerings uh, that we can give. The first of these is a material. We can make an offering of material things. This is perhaps the simplest and uh, easiest of the offerings to make, of the gifts to give to our friends, our neighbors, our fellow human beings, especially if it's something that is needed at a time of need. If we can give something... Um, to those who need those things, uh, I think that is very much appreciated. It is a wonderful uh, thing we can do for somebody, especially if what we are giving is also something that is meaningful to us. Uh, it is something that uh, we also can make use of, but if we choose to give it to others, then that is uh, twice as meaningful. The one kind of offering you can make. And here, in, in terms of Sangha, you know, this is really something that uh, we can work on because the Sangha has such tremendous resources. Uh, when we pull everybody together, there's really, in today's world, there's very little need right now to be concerned and worried uh, about material things. Although it seems that we are preoccupied uh, with that uh, for most of uh, our time, we are preoccupied with material things. It really uh, seems to be just uh, a habit energy, uh, a disease of the mind, greed, and anxiety, feeling insecure 
about material things. Although yeah, we never really found lacking anything. We have no evidence to be insecure about material things. Maybe some of you have gone hungry. I know there are people in this world who go hungry and they don't have uh, a shelter and uh, uh, they're struggling. But even, uh, especially in Canada here, uh, for the vast majority of cases, it, probably homelessness and so on, it has to do more with mental health uh, than with lack of material things. So this is the one thing we can do. We can give material gifts uh, to each other. This is one kind of offering we can make. And the second kind of offering that is spoken about is the offering of Dharma. And this is a bit more difficult to do uh, because the Dharma is not uh, some dogma or information. It is not something that is written on a page. A dharma is really, it is, uh, it's an unspoken uh, language of peace. And it is something that has immediate uh, efficacy. If it's genuine dharma, it should have immediate efficacy on us. It should work right away. It is kind of like a medicine that works right away. Uh, so it, it, by its very nature, has to be something that is very applicable to the present moment in our lives. And this is uh, maybe a reason why these Dharma talks that I'm giving uh, with no one sitting around me is more difficult because normally I get a lot of uh, inspiration and feedback. I, I, I kind of tend to sense or try to sense what is appropriate uh, in this situation with this particular audience. I try to uh, say something that is apt to the listeners in the room. And right now, uh, the only listeners are, uh, I can see uh, trees, I can see fields, and I can see a blue sky. And <laughs> I don't necessarily uh, feel uh, that they need to converse with me. But uh, so I'm trying to imagine uh, you sitting in your homes in uh, practicing isolation. Um, this time of pandemic and uh, so I'm trying to imagine what sort of things would be appropriate to you. Um, so it has to be something that is effective right away, Dharma. And the effect is to pacify the mind the fact is to pacify our anxieties, to pacify our um, worries, also to pacify our doubts about uh, specifically how to practice, when to practice, what is the authentic practice and what is the content of that authentic practice. So in a way you can say that when you sit, when we sit in Zazen, uh, this is Dharma, if it has those effects, uh, if it's a genuine uh, practice of Zazen, then it will pacify the mind and it will ease our worries, it will ease our anxieties, it will break apart our doubts about what Zazen is. Uh, so it has that uh, effect is of pacifying the mind. 
And of course, with that peace comes a kind of clarity that comes from that peace. Uh, our ability to perceive things in a way that we couldn't before. We can see things we couldn't see before because our minds were clouded by worries and anxieties and doubts. So this making an offering on da of Dharma is really a making an offering of peace, a peace of mind. But of course, in order to be able to receive that, we have to know how to receive that. Uh, in the same way that receiving instructions of how to sit in zazen, in meditation, is not the same as sitting in zazen and sitting in meditation. So we have to know how to receive a dharma. Uh, and specifically that means we have to know how to pacify our own minds. We have to know how to settle down. We have to know how to perceive things with clarity. So this is a second kind of offering that is spoken about. And the third kind of offering is uh, called a gift of fearlessness. And in some ways this is considered the highest offering. All our fears, they are rooted in our confusions. They are rooted in our discriminating consciousness. Uh, they're rooted in our greed for this thing or uh, wanting one thing and not wanting another thing. And so the gift of fearlessness in order to be able to receive this we, it's a really a gift of one uh, irrefutable existence. It is this one irrefutable existence uh, that destroys our fears. And this has to be something that is perceived directly and experienced directly by each one of us. It is this, the language of these trees uh, and this field and this sky. This is the language of one irrefutable existence. It is also your language. You are this one irrefutable existence. Uh, but to receive, to be able to receive this gift, uh, we have to uh, really open our hearts really, really wide. Whatever it is that's not allowing us to open our hearts really, really wide uh, is the root of our fears. So the, the trying to hold on to things, to protect things, to keep certain things in reserve, so to speak, for the rainy day. And maybe this is a rainy day. To keep things for a rainy day. Uh, this is fear. So, uh, we have to open our hearts really, really wide and then we can receive uh, this gift of fearlessness and courage. So, 
when we talk about generosity, whether it is of material goods, whether it is that of uh, peace, peace of mind, compassion, loving kindness, or whether we are talking about uh, fearlessness. It's really the three just uh, aspects of the one and the same thing. And it's just in different situations, depending on the need, depending on the particulars of the situation, it manifests in a different way. But uh, sometimes we imagine, we only imagine that we are limited in some way. And maybe you feel you cannot give this gift of Dharma. And the only thing that you can give is some material, material thing, make a material offering. Well, then that's uh, what we do. We do what we can. But this is just something that we imagine. Uh, if you pacify your mind, if you know how to do that, then with your very presence, uh, you can make an offering of your peaceful, irrefutable one existence uh, to your community. So these are some thoughts uh, for today on uh, April 6th. Uh, this is, um, I, I am now imagining that no one will ever listen to this and that this is a, a, a conversation uh, between uh, trees, sky and the fields. Uh, I hope that you are, are well. I hope that you are staying strong. I hope that uh, you're not finding too much restlessness. And I hope that uh, you're finding uh, this situation as only an opportunity uh, to open up uh, our hearts uh, even wider. So thank you very much. I hope to hear from you and to see you soon. Bye for now.